So, so hi, um, I'm James Abel. Um, I'm going to talk about putting uh, your applications, if you want to write them up, on the taskbar. Um, also on the system tray. It's my name. This is the places you can find me. Uh, look me up right there. Um, so the agenda, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about like what is a taskbar application, why would you want to make one, how do you make one. Uh, very simple, like hello world. I'm going to go. I'm going to do another one that's a little more interesting, at least as something. Um, and then I've got some follow-up materials on kind of where you go maybe after you create one. So you say, what is a task? Okay, I think everybody's kind of looked at their computer and they know what a taskbar application is. Right? Sorry, I don't know if I can really get everybody's way here, but um, you know, basically it's the taskbar, right? It's Windows. It looks like that. Mac. It looks like that. And of course, Wikipedia has a great um, explanation of it, but it's the task bar, it's the system tray. I think you guys probably get it. Okay, but you might be worried about putting one up there. It's like, how would I ever put my own application up there that looks really hard, right? There's no way I'd ever get that done. It's actually not that hard because there's a, uh, a framework, a, there's a thing called Qt, and I don't really know where the name came from, but there's a it's a cross-platform application framework that I use to, to put these things together. Um, there's also a binding called PyQ. Um, related to that, there's also a thing called PySide. If you've ever heard of it, I've gone back and forth between using them. Uh, these days, <clears throat> I use PyQ5. It seems to work OK. Uh, actually, works really well. Uh, so that's what I'll be talking about if, you, if you've heard about that. So let's get into some Python code. <clears throat> Um, so don't worry about the grayed out part. What I what I have here is the Hello World taskbar app. Like, what is the minimum thing you need to do to put something up on that that taskbar? So I'll go through this really quickly. Um, so well, this actually runs, and I'll I'll show you the execution of this in a minute. Um, so back kind of down here at the bottom, if you can see it, um, like I say, PyQ, you know, Cube puts everything together for you fairly um, uh, fairly well. You call uh, an application patch, you get an instance of the application. A little bit of uh, futzing around here so to make sure that the uh, pop-up dialogues and when you're up there in the taskbar, they behave the way you'd like them to. Then it just call it, gets an instance of the system tray, show it, and execute it. So what does this um, class do? Well, it inherits, uh, you know, a lot of the work is here from the queue system tray icon. So that's the thing that's actually going to put something up there and pretty much deal with it. So it's cool that you don't have to do any of that work. You have to worry about how to get up there. Uh, PyQ has pretty much done that stuff for you. And then you say, OK, well, there's a picture. Right? There's an icon. There's an icon. Um, I'll talk in depth about what it means to create an icon. But for right now, uh, you load it up. And then when you um, uh, uh, call into the base class, you give it that icon. And then that's the icon that it uses. And all you have to do is put up the menu. So again, they have a Q menu um, uh, class that you can instantiate. You give it a couple of little pull downs. Uh, you set the menu, and then you're off. You do uh, connect these actions into the methods. So you can say trigger, connect, uh, fairly easy here, which points you down to this method. And in my case, I just call that. Um, queue application and tell it to exit. Okay, so that's the basic. You, know, you, you can so you can put something up there in about about a dozen lines. The other thing I'll add on here for the complete application because it's kind of boring just to put something up in an exit. Um, I've got an about um, a dialog box, and this is just the usual um, uh, PyCube stuff. Is We've connected it to an about pull down. We put up a dialog box. We say hello world. Of course, you got this, you know, set the layout and do the show and then uh, show it. Uh, so that's really all you have to do. And now I will give a demo. I think the demo gods are with us. Let's find out what happens. So, what I'll do. So what I've done, and this is going to be hard for you to see, I think this is expanded pretty big, but this is, don't worry the fact that we got two of them, don't worry about that right now. But this is what we, 
it, it, this is the hello world. So sorry, this is kind of small. I hope you guys can see it. It's expand the screen is like really high resolution on this one. It's higher than I'm used to the projecting on. Uh, but this is the hello world um, little dialog box that comes up there. And then of course you can do this and then you can exit it. So that was the code. So that was this code here. Uh, and if I would... okay. right. there you go. So this is the whole code that it takes to put up something on the screen and at least do something, right? Um, you say, well, that's great, but it really needs to do more. I'm trying to get funding for my startup. That's a little bit. You can probably get a million bucks for that, but I need a little bit more than that with the way real estate prices are. <laughs> so. <laughs> So what we're going to do, we're going to talk a little bit about more what it would take to develop something a little more real. Um, so the first thing is, and I mentioned, I kind of glossed over the icons. So this is probably one of the more, uh, the, uh, the things that you have to go through, and it's like, all right, there's a few steps you have to do. But, uh, so you need to put up that little picture uh, up on the taskbar. This one I downloaded from the internet. I just went to this icon archive, found one. Uh, just put like, I think I put you know rock icon or something in there. Downloaded this thing. Now you do get the uh, PNG file, the ICO, the ICS. So this is the ping file. It's just you guys are probably familiar with that. Just an image. This is an icon for Windows. This is an icon for um, Apple Mac OS. Um, now the only thing I do that's a little bit tricky here is I don't actually use the ping file. Um, directly, I, am, I put it into a .py file. The reason I do that is that if you ever want to give this to somebody, you don't have this like sort of extra, okay, I've got to figure out how to, how to put this uh, ping file someplace so that my Python can pick it up. What I do is I embed it into, basically I put it into a .py file. And uh, the, the folks over um, in, um, in QT land have already thought about all this stuff. So what, what, there's a line here, if you can see it, is that there's a resource compiler. And inside here, I'll point to it, so this icon.png is this you know, rock and roll symbol, right? And you put it into this resource compiler with this QRC file that says, yeah, give me the ping file that does that, and output it as icons.py. So you'll end up with a Python file that has your icon, not an icon file, right? And that's how you instantiate it this way. So it, it creates this file, this icons.py file. And like I said, you instantiate it here. You go to the import icons, um, it's a regular import statement, and then it imports this file, right? And then this queue icon and queue pick, picks map, it's, it picks this out of that resource and allows you to use it in your application. Now this icons.py file, file is programmatically generated. It's got all the stuff in it. You don't care. Right? All you do is import this ugly thing and you use it and it works. Okay. Any questions? I mean, you can, you can interact. It's all kind of flow so far, so you're not too scared. You can, you want to make one now? Yeah. What about the dynamic icons? Like I, I have something that shows me my current memories. Oh yeah, you can you can do dynamic icons. I can't remember exactly what the, the methods are off the top of my head, but you can reload those dynamically. But like if I want to see a number, like so that that wouldn't be like it's not even an image; it's a number. But generate an, an, an image of the number. If you well, yeah. So if if you've got an icon and you want to say one, two, three, four, yeah, you'd have to dynamically generate that an image based on that and then load it up. It's probably not that hard. I'm sure that there. Are, you can't just use text or anything. Not that I know of. I, I've I've never put up a text string. I I have updated with different icons from like you know it's like working ready blah blah blah. Uh, but I've never done a, ask, you know, a number or letter. Any other question? Okay. Um, okay, now we want to do something useful because that's not really a, a rocking type of application. So we have what I call the rocker task for application. 
Um, so, because one of the things is that I just showed you, okay, you can click and you can make a dialog box. Well, who cares, right? One of the, the things you obviously have on your taskbar application, they do something in the background. So, um, this is not really um, GUI stuff, but uh, what I've done here is I've made a CPU monitor, and I'll show you this in the demo in a second. And so, this is just a thread that executes in the background, um, a bunch of setups, but when it runs, it just uh, looks at the CPU percent. I get this from this uh, PSUtil uh, package. And then does a performance histogram. And this little thread just sits there in the background. And the way we call this in our application is we just instantiate this class, we start it, and it just sits there in the background collecting uh, you know, big histogram information. And you're going to say, well, what does that look like? Well, that's why I had one of these up here, because I had, I was running it, and I wanted to collect some, kind of some data. So what this has been doing while I've been talking is collecting my CPU information. And these, it's relatively simple. It's only, you know, a, a handful of lines of code, so it's not, like, super uh, UI friendly. But this is, see that? The CPU off down there. Huh, down there. Demo got Anyway, this is CPU percent down here. Otherwise, cutting it off. Um, so this says, okay, I've got four cores. I get eight threads, which I get dynamically. Um, and this is using the uh, matplotlib. And it has a count for how many times. So this is about so most of the time my CPU is sitting there at, you know, single digit percentages. And, it's, and I've been sitting there watching the presentation, so not really too much has been happening. And I haven't been using much of my computer. But this is interesting to say, well, gee, how many cores do I really need? How, many core, how much of my machine that I spent thousands of dollars on <laughs> it was really necessary? And you can run this in the background working, and then... You know, mine kind of, you know, when I'm actually doing something, mine kind of like, looks like this. So 50% and on up, I hardly ever see anything. So you could argue I paid too much. But I used to work at Intel, and I know how much that costs. So I really wasn't that much. But anyway, um, so this is something you can do relatively easily to create an application that does that. And Back to my presentation, that's all my demos. So, um, so that's basically how much time do I have left? You're pretty much right on time. I'm right on time. So, this is my last slide. Um, so, this is the follow up material. Um, so, this is all open source. I got this up on Git, all the stuff is open source. Got it up on GitHub. Uh, this actually works on both Mac OS and Windows. So that's a nice thing. I, I don't know if I emphasize that, but. All the PyQ stuff was um, it's cross-platform. Then you want to give it to somebody, <laughs> which we've talked about before. There's a bunch of freezers, installers. If you ever want me to talk about that again, I've talked about this a couple of times. But let's just talk about this. Um, we can continue to try to do some good things in that area. Uh, we can talk about that later. Um, on my open source GitHub, I've got a couple other applications that actually do something interesting. Uh, if you want to go up and look at that, I've got a thing that does encryption on top of cloud storage. I've got something that propagates the modification time on the directory tree. So I'm out of time, but this is a teaser. If you ever want me to come back and bore you about these, I can do that. Absolutely. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Any questions? You can take one question. Yes. You, you can collect like, local data like, before you can like, them on your computer that you have running in the background. Using this, I don't see why. Not. I mean, it would be a different API to get to your mic, but yeah, I, I'm sure that it you know, probably exists someplace. But yeah, it, I mean, it runs in the background, so you can create a thread. So that thread that I created, um, that was, oops. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I ran out of the slide. I wanted, really wanted to show that one. Um, uh, I started out of time. Um, but yeah, this thing that's the the CPU that I currently have is three. CPU monitor and is running in a thread. 
You can put anything in here. I just happen to have this one line that looks at the CPU. But yeah, you could you could make that. Oh, I'm well, looking at the mic. It's kind of hard to get uh, dialogue data from the internet, and if you can have it running on your the back side of your computer during the week that you're working on it, you can just get free data without even thinking about it. Hmm. I mean, like, that's okay. Nice. All right. Cool. All right. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Yeah, we can take questions after. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm around. He's around.